Tere armsad TV7 vaatajad! Me oleme alustamas uut saatesarja Vabadus Kristuses. Ja meie eesmärk on tuua teie nii kümme saadet, milles siis lühikokku võtta Ameerika teoloogi, piibliõpetaja ja autori doktor Niil Andersoni kursusest. Nii et Vabadus Kristuses, siis nagu me tänasta tunneme, sai valmis 2017 ja inglise inglase Steve Kossi juhatusel ja eestvedamisel siis. Tänaseks on Vabadus Kristuses kursusel läbinud üle poole miljon inimese ja ta on tõlgitud sirka neljakümnesse keelde, nii et eesti keeles samamoodi täismahus täiesti saadaval. Nüüd see võib ju mõelda, et kui ma olen Kristuses, kas ma polegi siis automaatselt vaba? No, meil tuleb mõelda praktiliselt, et kui palju siit meie seas kimbutab näiteks vale mina pilt või mingit kontrollimatud vihasööstud või sidumised sõltuvused, mille suhtes me võime tunda, et ma on sõike tunnen nagu, et väljapääsu polegi. Nüüd mina tahaksin sulle kindlasti kohe ära öelda, et väljapääs on alati olemas, aga mõnikord on see lihtsalt teekond. Ja sellepärast me kutsumegi sind sellele teekonnale ühes koos meiega. Nii et antud saatesari küll ei asenda kursust, aga kui sa tunned, et pärast saadete vaatamist ohtaks veel rohkem nendesse teemadesse süvenenda, siis loomulikult oled alati oodatud kursusega ühinema. Ja meie saade on ka siis mingis mõttes kombinatsioon kahest erinevast keelest. Loodame siis, et subtiitrid aitavad ka teil head vaatajad siis kõigest hästi aru saada. Ja meie tänase saate esimeseks teemaks on Kes ma olen? Nüüd minu nimi on Alice Osborne ja nagu te näete, ma ei ole siin stuudios suu üksinda. Minu ka kaasas on ka minu abikaasa Alan Osborne. Tere, Alan! Tere, Alice! Tere! Tere, tere! Ma tahaksin kõigepealt Alani käest küsida. Alan, if somebody would ask you who you are, what would you answer? It's a really good question when we think about it. Who are we? Um, I think for me, I am uh, a pastor of a church. Um, I, I am a father. I am a brother. I am even a grandfather. Also, I work in IT. Also, I have had many jobs and uh, I've written books. So many things. Uh, I like sports. Uh, so there's many things that, that I am. Okay. Obviously, you're a man with many talents, but... Um... Is it who you really are? Well, for that, I think we need to dig a little bit deeper and look at some teaching that's going to help us to understand who we really are. Yeah, I'm ready to do that. So it's a really good question. Who are we really? And we know as Christians that we are made in the image of God. And we know that God is one God, but three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that as a humanity that God has created, we're all made in his likeness, in his image. And we see that in Genesis 1, 26, where it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness. So, like God, we too, I believe, are made up of three parts. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. When Adam and Eve were first created, they were physically and spiritually alive. And God said to them, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. And that's in Genesis 2.17. See, God gave them just one command to follow, but they were tempted to disobey, and disobey is exactly what they did. And they ate of the, the fruit of the forbidden tree. And this allowed sin into human nature. And they died spiritually. They didn't die physically because they lived for many years after that, but they died spiritually. And they lost that intimate connection that they had with God when they were first created. And this is how we start out life today without that connection to God. We're physically alive, but spiritually dead. 
And we long to fill that spiritual gap with anything and, and everything, really. And it could be, you know, we maybe, maybe we deny God. Maybe uh, we seek after very many other spiritual things and activities to try and fill that void that we have because we've lost that connection with God. And what happened when we lost that connection with God is we, we lost some things. We lost our acceptance and this was replaced with a sense of rejection. We lost our security as well and this was turned into, into fear. Did you know that do not be afraid is the most repeated command in the Bible? And the other thing that we lost is significance and purpose. And these were replaced by guilt and shame. And we search in many ways to try and find these three things, acceptance, security, and significance. Examples might be that in finding acceptance, we, we want to belong somewhere, maybe to a sports club or maybe to a book reading club, but we want to belong and feel accepted. Um, all of us need to, to feel that. With security, perhaps it's in a secure family home and a, and a setting that we would like to, to, to be in. And significance, an example of that, might be that our lives matter for something, that we do a, a good job or we help others. But we're seeking, all of mankind is seeking these three things, acceptance, security and some significance. Now we know, don't we, that when Jesus came to this earth, he came to bring us life. Where Adam and Eve sin brought death spiritually, Jesus came to bring back that spiritual life to us. And he is the only person, the only solution to reconnect uh, in true relationship with God, to become spiritually alive in Christ. We can read about that in Romans 6, 8 to 11. It says this, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God in the same way. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful scripture that is. You see, Jesus is the only person since Adam who was born physically and spiritually alive. Jesus was the only person. We know that Adam is often, it was the first Adam, but Jesus is often called the second Adam. And we read that in 1 Corinthians 15, 45. It says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being the last Adam, or Jesus, a life-giving spirit. So Jesus brings us this life-giving spirit that we have, the Holy Spirit, that we might have life again and be connected back with God. Jesus never gave in to the temptation of sin. He was tempted just like us, but he did not sin. Hebrews 4.15 tells us that. It says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So Jesus didn't sin in his life. Um, it's a problem that we have um, and that we inherit because of, of Adam and Eve's sin. But we know that Jesus came to give us life he even said in John 10:10 10, 10, these famous words, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Well, in some translations, it says in abundance, abundant life. So we have this abundant spiritual life that Jesus comes to give us. And this is so important. You know, when we become Christians by recognizing who Jesus is and that he is the savior of our sins, and we ask Jesus to become our saviour and our Lord. He, he sends the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We do become spiritually alive again and we reconnect with God. This is the gospel. This is the good news. Jesus is the only one who can give us this spiritual life with God. And you know what? This spiritual life is eternal. 
eternal life. That's what we gain. It's fantastic. Adam lost life. Jesus came to give us life. And this means that Jesus is the only person who can truly give us these three things that we're looking for in life. Some acceptance, security and significance. Jesus is the only person who can give us these true things as he brings a spiritual life and reconnects us with God. So I may have answered Alice's question. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll head back over now and, uh, and chat through this uh, with her with, with, with a couple of questions. Yes, Alan, you really answered my questions and thank you for that. But you know, now the new question somehow came forth that I really want to ask you. And you were mentioning John 10.10, 10, and you were speaking about Jesus bringing life in its fullness. So what do you think how it would look like in a person's practical life? Well, if you think about those three areas, Alice, you know, instead of acceptance, we walk around with, we can walk around with rejection in our lives. Uh, in, in, instead of security, we're, we have fear. Instead of significance and purpose, you know, we feel insignificant and, and worthless sometimes. So we can become Christians, but still have those issues in our lives. And to be in this abundant life, this spiritual life that Jesus gives us, then I think what we need to do is to work out how to walk away from those things yeah. and to feel that security and, and significance and acceptance, to feel those things. When we feel them, our lives will be transformed and we'll be very different people. Can you imagine everyone in church, you know, all the Christians that we know, just not fearing anymore, having no fear, yes. um, being bold and courageous for Jesus, you know, uh, and with not carrying shame or guilt anymore, not feeling rejected anymore. But the reality is, is many Christians carry those things around. And so what Freedom in Christ is aiming to do is to show us how to become free from those things and live in that abundant life. Thank you so much for a good explanation. Aga harmsat televaatajad, järgmisena hakkame siis vaatama tunnistust inimeselt, kes on läbinud vabadus Kristuses kursuse. See kursus muutis nii palju, kuidas ma ise ennast näen. See muutis minu enese innangut, millega mul on nii lapsest, lapsepõlves saati olnud nii palju tegemist. See vabastas mind, see näitas, kes ma olen Kristuses. Ja et mul on rahu Jumalaga, ma ei pea muretsema absoluutselt mitte millegi pärast. Ma olen Jumala laps ja see on nii vabastav ja imeline tunne, nii et ma tänan Jumalat selle kursus eest. Alan rääkis meil inimesed kolmest põhivajadusest ja kuidas need Kristuses saavad täidetud, kuid nüüd on ka täitsa asja kohane küsida, et kui suur see meie identiteedi muutus siis ka on. Me ju kõik teame suurepäraselt oma möödapanekuid, oma patte, aga kui kaugele Kristuse andesta vägi ulatub ja kes ma siis ikkagi temas olen? Kas ma olen patune, kellele mu patud on andeks antud? Nüüd, kui sa palusid Jeesuse Kristuse oma isendaks, siis mis sündis oli see, et sa astusid pimeduse kuningriigist valguse kuningriiki. Ja piibel väljendab sellist päris dramaatilist keelt selle sündmuse suhtes. Vaatame näiteks Pauluse teises kirjast Korintlastele 5.17. Ja Paulus ütleb seal, nii siis, kui keegi on Kristuses, siis ta on uus loodu. Vana on möödas, vaata, uus on sündinud. Mida see tähendab? See tähendab uut loomus, see tähendab uut tuleviku ja see tähendab ka seda, et Jumal lihtsalt ei lappi mingit vana asja kinni. Ta teeb midagi täiesti uut, midagi täiesti teissugust ja midagi väga-väga imelist. Ja see võib nüüd kõlada natuke isegi võõralt sulle. Ma ei tea, kuidas sa oled harjunud mõtlema, milline on su teoloogi, aga sa ei ole enam patune, sa oled nüüd püha. See on see, kuidas Jumal siin näeb. Sinu staatus on uus, sa oled Jumalale eraldatud, sa oled talle kuuluv. Ja see küsimus on mind ennast ka päris palju vaevanud sellepärast, et 
Seda on päris raske vastu võtta. No, veelkord lihtsalt sellepärast, et me teame väga täpselt, kes me oleme, mida me oleme tunnud, mida me oleme mõelnud. Aga sõbran ma mõtlen, et polegi võib-olla nii oluline see, et kuidas meie tunneme või, või meie mõtleme, oluline on ikkagi see, mis Jumala sõna ütleb. Loen sulle ka roomlastele, kirjast roomlastele 5.8. Kristus suri meie eest, kui me olime alles patused. Ja nii nimetab Paulus siis oma kirjades kristlased sirka 40 korda pühadeks. Ja, ja mitte korda ei nimetada kristlases siis identiteedi või staatuse mõttes patusteks. Nii et piibli põhjal peaks asi üsna selgi olema. Kuidas siis ikkagi lahendada seda meie sees peituvad konflikti? Just nimelt selle tõttu, et Ma oleme teadlikud oma enda puudustest ja nõrkustest ja eksimustest ja, ja see tõttu meie süda ütleb meile, et me oleme patused. Aga teate, tänu Jumalale, meie tunded ja isegi meie kogemused tegelikult ei määrata ära seda, kes me oleme. Kiri Efeslastel ütleb 1.4, et Jumal on meid valinud Kristuses. Oleme pühad ja laitmatud tema palge ees armastuses. Nii et, kui sa oled... Jumala kutsele vastanud, siis, siis oled püha. Pole isegi nii oluline, mida, mida, mida sa mõtled või mida sa tunned. Aga kui me hakkame endid ka pühadena nägema, siis tegelikult ka meie käitumine muutub. Ja see aitab, see arusam aitab meil meie igasuguste lihategude ja asjadega, mis Jumalat ei austa palju paremini toime tulla, sest et kui me mõtleme korraks, me, me käitume just nimelt selliselt, kuidas me ise endid näeme. Näiteks, kui me ei pea end kuigi väärtuslikuks inimeseks, siis, siis, siis me käitume ka selliselt. See, see, see paistab välja. Te, me ise, me võib-olla ise ise aru, aga teised inimesed saavad aru. Ja, ja see on nii, nii oluline, armsad sõbrad, et, et, et aru saada seda muutust, ta identiteedi muutust, mis, mis uus sünniga kaasneb. Ja, 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 ja mis ka toimub on see, et kui me saame aru, kus me oleme, siis tõepoolest me ei pea, me ei pea häbenema, nagu alangi siin mainis hirmu ja, ja kartust ja... Ja me peame mõtlema, mis teised inimest meil mõtlevad. Me teame, kes me oleme ja me võime tõesti käia selles elus pea püsti ja, ja selg sirge. Nii et, kes sa oled Kristuses? Nüüd üks asi peab veel olema selge, et nüüd kõik head ja ilusad asjad, millest me seni rääkinud oleme, need on kätte saadavad ainult Kristuses. Pea vaataja, küsi ise endalt, kas sa oled Jeesuses Kristuses? Sest et vaata, me ei sündinud Kristuses. Nii et ma loen sulle ka kinnituse Nefeslaste 2.1. Me sündisime surnult, vaimselt surnult, oma üleastumistes ja patudes. Nii et see tõttu, me tuleb sündida uuesti. Ja Johannes Evangelium 3.3. Siis vastab Jeesus uudishimulikule Nikodeemusele. Tõesti, tõesti, ma ütlen sulle, kes ei sünni ülalt, ei või näha Jumala riik. Sa pead uuesti sündima. Kui sa ei tea päris täpselt, mis see tähendab, siis minu poolt isiklikult võid minu kühendust võtta ja me võime sel teemal veel edasi rääkida. Aga mulle tundub, et alan vaatab mu poole ja tahaks, tahaks nagu midagi mu käest küsida. Ma lähen siis ja uurin järgi. So, Helis... Really interesting teaching. Thank you for bringing that to us. Are you saying that we are now all holy ones, that we are saints? And, and if, that's, if that's true, then what difference does that make in your life? Yes. Well, the thing is that it's not even what I'm saying, but I have found out really that this is what the Bible is saying. And I, I really... I would I really trust this and um you're right it has changed the way how I think how I act and the main reason is that um if we think about ourselves 
as a sinners, then what are the sinners doing by definition? They sin. Mm -hmm. But um, when I understood that, well, I am God's chosen, uh, I'm, I'm important, I'm, I'm holy, everything has changed. It's very, very dramatic. And then how does sinning and holiness come together? They just, they just don't. This is the, the main thing for me. But Alan, perhaps for you, does this understanding has changed your life? Well, yeah, it's, it's a really good question, isn't it? What difference does it make to my life to know that I am holy? Because sometimes, if we're, I think if I'm honest, and I think if the viewers are honest with themselves, sometimes we don't feel holy. We don't feel that we are uh, living this really holy life and, and we still get things wrong. We still sin occasionally, we, we make mistakes. And it's important to know what God's word says, because if we believe that God's word is the truth, then we must base our lives upon that truth, not on how we feel. So even though I don't feel holy sometimes, or often I don't feel holy, yes. uh, it doesn't change the truth that I am holy. I'm holy in God's sight. He sees me as pure, as spotless, uh, because of the work of the cross that Jesus did. Not because anything that I did, not because I was able to gain uh, this, this, this holy uh, kind of living and, and standard all by myself. No, it's because Christ did that for me. And when Jesus has, has done that, he, he gave his life on the cross that we could be free and live in that holiness and, and to realize that we are saints. The Bible, if you said, as we're referred to as saints in the Bible, when that word is used, talking about Christians. When the word sinner is used, it's usually around talking to non-believers, those that don't follow Jesus. So there's a difference in the Bible between the two. So we have to begin to see ourselves as saints and as holy people. And if we can see that, the, the difference is very small, but very, very subtle as well. Because if we think that we are sinners, if I say to myself all the time, I am a sinner saved by grace. Yes, that is true. I am a sinner saved by grace, but that's not the full story. The full story is that I'm now referred to in the scriptures as someone that always is holy. And as I say, we, we still mess up. We don't float around like angels, like these perfect heavenly beings. We will only find that perfection when we get to be with Jesus in heaven. But in this life, as a disciple of Jesus, I'm to become more and more like him. And if he was true, if he was holy, then that's the journey for my life. I have to journey towards a life of, that moves away from sin yeah. and runs towards holiness. So my life should, should uh, because of that difference and that very subtle difference that I'm not just a sin saved by grace, that's trying to avoid sin and, and keeps messing up, I move to this, this other part where I'm actually holy and I run towards holy living and a holy God. And in that communion with him, uh, I begin to see myself differently and I begin to live differently. Um, and that's the key, uh, I think, for, for my life. That's what helps me to, to run towards God and not hide from him because I've done something wrong. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Alan, for this really good explanation. Ja nüüd äh, armsad sõbrad, tahangi teile veel öelda, et, äh, et nagu me näeme, siis kõik algabki tegelikult äh, ühest äh, julgest äh, küsimusest, et kes ma olen, kes ma päriselt olen. Ja see on kindlasti üks nendest asjadest, millel me peame pihta saama. Ja mulle meeldib äh, üks Mark Twaini ütlus, ta on tuntud äh, lasteraamatud autor, kindlasti olete lugenud näiteks Thomas Oyerit. Ja ta on öelnud niimoodi, et meie elus on kaks kõige tähtsamat päeva. Esiteks päev, mil me sündisime ja teiseks see päev, mil me saime aru, miks me sündisime. Nii et ma loodan, et, et, et see fakt, et Jumal on loonud sind osaduseks ise endaga, ma loodan, et see on sinu jaoks saanud täna natukene selgemaks. Ja, 
ja me teame, me oleme, me oleme kogenud, me oleme näinud, et tegelikult ainult Jumalas on siis võimalik leida ise ennast oma identiteet ja vastata sellele kõigele tähtsamale, kõige tähtsamale küsimusele. Nii et meie poolt siis tänaseks kõik ja oleme väga rõõmsad, et olete olnud meiega ja, ja kohtumiseni siis järgmistest, järgmistes saadetes. Nii et palju, palju õnnistusi teile ja kõike heads. Väga meest! Fabulous Christus is, is here to help resource the church in Estonia. And we really want to encourage you uh, to support TV7. We've been here in the studios and had an incredible time, great staff, and, and they do so much to bring glory to God. And we want to encourage you to get behind them so that Jesus can be made known across all of Estonia. So thank you for watching. Bless you, and we'll see you soon.